NVIDIA was nice enough to send me the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090, and I'm excited to put this in my computer. So let's get started so we can test it in Blender. Now, before you ask, yes, it can play Minecraft, but let's get back to Blender. Now, just a little tease as to what's to come. You can see here that I'm actually playing back in real time one of my characters here with the Render Cycles preview mode on. Now, this character here has about 12,000 faces and two 4K image textures. Before we continue on, I'd love you to stop and comment below and let me know how you'd like me to test out this card and what other type of videos you'd like to see using this card. Now you may already know this, but Blender actually has an official benchmark website where you can download an application, it will run that benchmark and then submit the results for you if you voluntarily do so. Now, as you can see here, the RTX 4090 performs twice as fast as its predecessor, the RTX 3090, which in my tests, I found to be true. Now I'm going to use some of my own project files as well, but I also wanted to grab demo files from the Blender website that you can get yourself so that you can also follow along and compare the results with your own computer if you're looking to upgrade your GPU as well. Now I chose this first scene here because this scene has a little bit of everything. It has a lot of dense geometry, some complex shaders, and also some particles. So let's take a look at the render time on this. So we can see here with this render scene set to 300 samples, which is the default setting that we got to 24 seconds to render this entire scene. And you can see that with these shaders, these particles and the amount of geometry, that's a very impressive render time. Now, moving on, what's impressive about this scene and the render times here are the fact that a lot of these objects here actually have subsurface scattering, which if you've ever used before, you know, it can add a lot of realism to your objects, but also greatly increase render time. So let's take a look at this. So great, we can see here that this demo file with the default settings, subsurface scattering, and also displacement maps is rendering in just 24 seconds. So a lot of times you see these benchmark tests and you think like, wow, that's twice as fast. And then you go to use it in the real world experience and it's not. But you can see here that the RTX 4090 is actually delivering on its performance promises. Let's check out one of the scenes from one of Blender's short films. And the reason I chose this one is because it's really dense with the hair particles, which as anybody knows, if you use hair particles in Blender, they can really increase render times with not just Blender, but any 3D application. And the great thing about this demo project file is that if you come up here, they'll actually show you the previous render time. So you can see here that it looks like we had a two hour and 13 minute render. Now this first render was done with a CPU, so it's not fair to compare it to the 4090, but we can still see our render times here with 600 samples set. We'll see here that we were able to render this entire scene and up here in just 34 seconds. It's also worth mentioning too, that a lot of that render time you were watching was actually the scene being built out, which occurs on the processor. And then it kicks it over to the GPU for the rendering. So the GPU rendering in this scene was incredibly fast. And I'm very impressed at how quickly it was able to render all this for her. I believe that this card may make it possible for single artists to actually kind of produce artwork or animations with this type of hair and that level of fidelity on a single machine. Next up, let's take a look at one of my scenes. And the reason I wanted to choose this scene is because this is one of my earlier environments that I did, and it is incredibly poorly optimized. So I feel like for that reason alone, if it can brute force through these type of renderings, that can actually save you time where you're not spending a ton of time trying to optimizing your scenes. Rather, you can just create the scene, hit render and be done with it. So I actually have this scene set at 1500 samples that you can see over here. But what's impressive about this scene is that all this blue brick here is going to be a displacement map. And then down here, you can see all the particle systems we have. And then these IV systems are actually really dense. So let's go ahead and take a look at how quickly it can handle a scene like this from this perspective with a high depth of field, which will also add to render times. Yeah, so here what I would consider a difficult kind of stylized scene with all of these being displacement maps back here, all these particle systems, and then this entire scene under depth of field. And also all of this are image based textures here, meaning that they all have to be loaded into the memory here. And you can see that even at 1500 samples, it only took 46 seconds, even in a poorly optimized scene like this. So you could actually almost skip optimizing your scenes and just kind of brute force through your render scenes. And if you've ever had to optimize things like environments and stuff that can sometimes add 30, 40% of kind of the time to the project. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this thing performs in the viewport. So let's go ahead and dive right here into this viewport here. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch into render view real time so you can see how quickly that loads in. And again, as I said, what is impressive here 
is not just all the particles and kind of the geometry and all the image textures, but the fact that we have this kind of displaced texture back here as well. So anyways, you can see here that the viewport performance is just incredible. And I have a couple other scenes that are going to show this off even better. So for this next scene, I'm actually going to go ahead, load this in on a kind of a cold load so that these haven't been kind of preloaded and switch over to render view here. And this is the junk shop. I actually had specific requests for this one because it is so detailed with so many image textures. And you can see how quickly it just snaps into render view and you're able just to move around and look at everything. The scene has reflections, it has hair. I believe there's subsurface scattering here. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of image textures and there's a good amount of geometry. And you can see it is just kind of flying through the scene with no problem at all. And you can almost see it completely in real time. Now, quite possibly our most impressive scene here is the super cube. Now, I know you think I'm cracking a joke here, but if you take a look, if I click this and go down here into the scene statistics, you see that I have actually subdivided this so that there are 25,000 faces and that when we snap into render view here, we can move around this mesh absolutely no problem, despite the fact that there are 25 million faces in the scene. Quite impressive. Now switching over here to viewport performance in a heavy EV project, you can see here we have this beautiful scene created by Ian Hubert. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the channel and we can just fly around the scene seamlessly. So for your EV users, you know, this card is going to just absolutely smash any scene that you have. If we go here, switch back into camera view, hit render here, you can see we get a two and a half second render to do all of this. So pretty incredible. Here we are in the cycle renders view. And if I go ahead and hit, hit play here, now this is a 24 frames per scene second, and I have it set to play every frame. So there's gonna be a tiny bit of lag, but you can see up here that we are almost maintaining 24 frames per playback of the entire time while being in cycles render preview. This is just crazy. This means that you could actually potentially preview some of your animations in their final look just in the viewport. And you can see here that if I just stop and drag through, I can actually get a great look here. And now this doesn't just save you time in terms of your render, this saves you time in terms of working. Imagine if you can identify render glitches, render errors, or even just things you want to tweak all in the viewport without ever having to go to render. So not only are you saving time when you hit render, you're going to save the amount of re-renders you need to do. Overall, I just have to say that this card is exceptionally impressive. It's a huge jump in tech. It's amazing for 3D artists and I highly recommend it. I actually believe that as I'm working on my short film, I will be able to render the entire short film on this one card and not have to pay out for a render farm. I'd also like to call out that I'm using the optics accelerated AI denoising during my viewport renders here to kind of give me a more finalized version of what the piece could look like. And you can see with the 4090 card that it's actually pretty instantaneous in its rendering. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern shoddy on instagram and twitter so that i can see what you've made if you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files i do have a patreon and products that i sell links in the description below